Hi, my name is Shweta Nayak and I'm a program manager with the Azure Cosmos DB engineering team. This is part one of the series, building a Node.js application using Azure Cosmos DB API for MongoDB, where I'm going to cover how I built the different backend functionalities of a demo application called Cosmos Bookstore. In this part, I'm going to cover how to get started, connect to, and read from the database. So a bit more context about the application. It's a books catalog. It uses React for front-end or web layer, Express and Node.js for backend or server layer, and Cosmos DB API for MongoDB as the database. The data set that I've used for this application is from this source on Kaggle. And I've modified the schema further as per the requirements of my application. Uh, I've also put the link to the source Kaggle dataset in the GitHub repo of the application. So to start with, I created a Cosmos DB API for MongoDB account running API version 4.0. And then I imported the source Kaggle CSV file into my Cosmos DB account using mongo import command. So Cosmos Bookstore is the database that I have right now. And inside that, I have this collection called Books. So in the Books collection, this is how the schema of one item corresponding to one book looks like. We have this key um, fields for a book, like author, book format, the genre, book title, and a few dummy comments over here. And I've also connected to this Cosmos DB account using Mongo shell. Uh, I've switched to this Cosmos bookstore database. And here's how I can see the number of items that I have in the books collection right now. I'm going to keep using Mongo shell uh, in my session uh, to explain what operations I wanted to do against the database and then how I did that in Node.js. So let's look at the application code structure. We have client directory over here corresponding to the web tier of the application. And we have a server directory corresponding to um, the backend tier of the application. So in the server directory, we have under SRC, two directories again called DB and routes. The DB directory contains the main uh, modules of the application corresponding to the backend functionalities. And the routes are um, the express routes that we have defined. The backend dependencies are these. We have body parser to handle the HTTP methods, .env for reading the environment variables and secrets like the Cosmos DB connection string, Express for the backend framework, and MongoDB um, Node.js module. The entry point to the backend is from this server.js file. Uh, in this, we are first reading the environment variables then initiating an express application, mapping the routes in the express. Um, and we are initiating uh, the connect method to the um, DB module that we have imported from over here. This is how the DB object, uh, the DB module looks like. We have two functions over here, connect and get connection. Um, in the connect method, we use the Mongo client uh, to connect to the database. And I've specified a pool size of 10 over here. And uh, basically, the connect method gets called once uh, from the server.js. And then rest of the modules just use get connection to talk to the same Mongo client instance. Now I'll walk through the app functionalities one by one and the Mongo API syntax that I used to build them. So to start with, in the main page of the application, I wanted to display the list of books that I have in the books catalog. To do this in Mongo shell, I would run a command like this. I basically run a find operation without any query conditions specified. So this essentially gets me the first set of books, and um, it allows me to request the next set of items from the cursor, right? A cursor is basically a pointer to the documents in a collection. So to do something similar in um, Node.js, I wrote this function called get all books. Now let me start with the most basic version of this function. So let's ignore these additional parameters for now. I'll walk through them later. 
But to get the most basic version of the function, which is to get the entire list of items in the collection without any uh, conditions, any limits, I'll first get the db dot get connection, run db dot get connection, because I already have the db connection initiated in the backend. So I get that. I start with a blank query object, uh, basically to find all books without any query conditions. I run that find operation against the books collection. And my query object is still blank. So it's running a find all operation essentially. And store that in a cursor, a uh, cursor variable. And then I convert the objects in the cursor into an array. Right, and that's what I return. Uh, I return on a list of books um, from this get all books function. Now I import this get all books module from um, uh, into a route, and essentially what I'm defining over here is that my REST API accepts get method over a slash books path. So this is how my backend query would look like. My backend is listening on port 8080. So on slash books, I'm getting the entire list of um, books available in my collection. Now remember, this is 85,000 items, more than 85,000 items. So this is going to be a really heavy, heavy query. And essentially, I make my React frontend query this backend API, and I display the list of objects in my main page. Now, practically speaking, this is an expensive query and might be also an unnecessary query because practically there might not be a scenario where you have to get the entire list of items from the collection at once, right? So that's where uh, there is a need for pagination. So in pagination, what you do is essentially you get a, a page or two of items. And then as the user scrolls past the page, you automatically and seamlessly gather more items from the back end and display those, right? So to do that in Mongo shell, you would essentially run a skip and query um, function on top of your find method, right? So this is how you can do that. And it limits the output to those 20 objects and so on, right? To get the next one, next set of objects, you would skip 20 and limit 20. And that's how you'd go on. To do the same thing in my get all books function, I essentially used um, two parameters. One is the page number and second is the limit. So the page number starts with a zero and um, limit could be 20 items per page. So I pass those, um, uh, I run those methods, the limit and skip methods on top, top of my cursor to limit the number of items that I'm getting in my display cursor, right? So this will limit it to 20, to 20 books per iteration. And as the page number increments, uh, keeps getting more books from the cursor, right? Uh, to include this in the um, REST API, the express route, I have basically used um, the request query parameters. So uh, in the request query parameters, if we pass the page number and the limit, then with the same essentially uh, slash books REST API method, um, we can incorporate this additional functionality. So let's see how that um, backend API will look like. So I can essentially run something like this, slash books, um, page equals zero and limit is 20. And now you can see my uh, query is, my operation is limited to 20 items and for getting the next page, I just need to increment the page number. Uh, my front end would do that for me and um, go ahead and gather the next set of items. So this is how um, you achieve pagination and 
essentially infinite scrolling uh, because it seems to the user as if um, the scrolling is infinite, but in the back end, you are doing this um, through this pagination technique very efficiently. Now with that, I was able to limit the number of items returned in one operation, but it is still returning all the fields in my document. So um, like I said, in my document, I have these multiple fields. And as you can see in the main page of the books catalog, I did not need all the fields of a book. I only needed three fields. Uh, first one is the book title, the book author, and the book image. So how do I control and only return those three fields for an object, right? To do that in Mongo shell, I would specify the projection, um, the parameters that I want to project or the fields that I want to project like this. So in my find query, I first specify the query condition. In this case, it's still blank. And I specify the name of the items and one indicates I want to project them. So it would exclude all the other fields um, that I've not specified here. As you can see, underscore ID is the only field that's returned by default and would need to be manually excluded if we wanted to know uh, if we do not want it to show up. But apart from that, um, it has not projected rest of the uh, fields except the specified ones. I can do the same thing in in my get all books function, and I basically append this dot project function to my find operation, right? And I'm only returning these three properties um, in my API. And that's how, as you can see here, um, on my backend API result, I do not have the entire set of um, fields for the item, in the item. Uh, I only have those three, three fields that I have specified, right? And that's how you do projection. The last functionality I wanted to cover in this part of the series is sorting. So I have got the list of books in my main page of the books catalog now. But what if I want to give an option to the user to be able to sort by parameter other than the default order, right? So for example, right now I have the option to sort by rating over here and it's now getting the list of books um, in descending order of the rating. Before using sorting functionality in the application, we have to make sure we have indexed the field we want to sort by. We can check that from the portal by going to the data explorer in the Cosmos DB account, and then going to scale and settings under the collection and clicking on indexing policy. Over here, we can either make sure we add wildcard index to index all the fields in the collection, or we can add in single field index to index particular fields we want to sort by, right? So how do you do it in Mongo shell? So to sort um, on top of a find operation on Mongo shell, you would run a command like this. So I'm specifying the sort method over here. And this is a sort criteria that I've specified. Um, I'm asking to um, sort by the rating field in descending order. Minus one indicates descending. And just so I'm able to show that it's actually working, I'm also going to project um, the rating field just through this shell right now. So let's see, as you can see, it has got the list of the top items um, in descending order of rating, right? To do the same thing in Node.js, I am passing a parameter called sort by, um, and I'm going to allow to uh, the front end or, um, yeah, so the front end will tell me uh, what's the um, parameter that I want to sort by, right? Uh, for now, I've only included the capability to sort by rating in descending order. So um, if the front end specifies the sort by as rating, I add this sort criteria. 
and the sort criteria later gets added um, right over here or the cursor and returns the sorted list of items um, to the front end. Uh, once again, I'm using the uh, request query parameters to um, get the sort by uh, value from the REST API. Let's see how that API request would look like, the backend API request. So that would look, um, you could pass the sort by parameter something like this. You specify sort by equals rating and it will just go ahead and add that. There you go. Right? So that's how I was able to, um, uh, this front end is basically querying that REST API, passing the sort by query parameter and getting this result. So thanks for watching this video. In this part, we went through how to get started with your Node.js application using Cosmos DB API for MongoDB, how to run basic find operations, pagination, uh, projection, and sorting in your backend um, Node.js application. And uh, you can find the GitHub repo link for the application in the video description, as well as a link to try out Cosmos DB. Um, in the next video in the series, I'll talk about how to use query conditions and perform updates on your data in Cosmos DB.